Hello guys, in, in this video uh, I'm going to talk about another grammar point. I'm going to talk about another tense and that tense is uh, present, present, perfect tense. So I'll be discussing it while talking about I'll be talking about this tense and this tense is called present perfect tense. So before we discuss about the usages, let's discuss about the structures of present perfect. Now the structures, uh, what what is this structure for the positive sentence? The structure is subject plus have or has plus past participle. So we use uh, present perfect in this way so we use subject plus half or has plus past participle now uh, here half is used mostly for I for we for you and for they when do we use has has is used for he for she it and also for a singular subject now subject plus half or has plus past participle this is the structure of the present perfect it's how you use it to, in, in a positive sentence but if i want to talk about the if i want to change it to negative sentence for the negative sentence we use subject plus half or has plus not plus past, past participle this is how we can change it to negative and for the question form we use sub we just use half or has plus subject plus past participle so what is past participle past participle is the third form of the word and we also put a question mark this is how we can change it to the question for example if i have a sentence like this i have i have uh, prepared i have prepared the report now in this sentence, this is a present perfect tense. We have subject, this is auxiliary verb, and after auxiliary verb we have prepared, this is the past participle, and after that the report is the object. So this is how we can change it to a positive sentence. This is the positive sentence. If I want to change it to negative, I have to use not after the auxiliary verb. So what is the auxiliary verb here? Half or has. So we use subject plus uh, for example, let's write, write the sentence. I can say I have haven't or I have not prepared. I have not prepared the report. I have not prepared the report. So we can change it to the uh, negative. And if I want to change it to question, what should I do? For the question form, we use this structure half or has plus subject. For example, we can say half, half I and then we can say have i prepared the report have i prepared the report this is how we can change it to the the question form and we put a question mark now we have two more structures in the question form so we have uh, we have the negative inter interrogative uh, for example if i say have i not prepared the report have i not prepared the report so this is the so, so this is the negative inter interrogative. So this negative interrogative, this is the formal structure, and we have another structure too. We can also say have not I prepared the report? Have I not prepared the report? So this is how we can change it to negative inter interrogative. So and this is informal structure. Now, wh wh why do we call it formal? Because this not comes after the subject. But if this not comes before the subject, we can call it informal, negative interrogative. So, uh, let me say it again. This is the structure of a present perfect. For the positive sentence, we use subject plus half or has plus past participle. And for the negative form, we use not after the auxiliary verb. And for question form, we use auxiliary verb at the beginning of the sentence. Half or has plus subject plus past participle. 
and got a question mark these are the examples and we have two more structures for the negative interrogative so we have formal one when not comes after the subject but when not comes before the subject is called informal now it's all about these structures so let's go talk about another uh, let's talk about the usages of present perfect when do we actually use present perfect tense so now we know the structures we use subject plus half or has past participle third form of the word now let's discuss about the usages of present perfect when do we actually use the present perfect so we use present perfect in two ways first one present perfect talks about an action it talks about an action is started in the past action is started in the past in the past and completes or finishes completes before or we can say before another action before another action in the present tense in the present in the present this is the first usage the first definition or we can call it the first function now this is a chart this is a time chart so from here this is past up to here this is present and after that is future now this is a time chart from here up to here is past and here this point is present after that is past future now the first definition or the first usage of present perfect it talks about an action an action that started in the past look here the action is started in the past like for example here and it continues up to present it finishes here before another action in the present tense. For example, if I have two actions, for example, we have we have the action of eating and the action of arrive. Now, for example, uh, somebody you started eating, or somebody started eating in the past, when the people or his friends came, or when we came or I came, you start you finish. So, so for example, right now I started eating around thirty minutes ago. So when, when the people come, I finish it. So here, action of eating starts in the past and it completes before action of arriving. So for the action that has just happened, or the action where we can say that um, when we talk about the result of something, something finished, and we talk about the result of it, or it just finished, we use this structure. Uh, for example, if I want to make an example, we can say they have, they have eaten they have eaten, for example, they have eaten breakfast. We can also say they have had breakfast. They have eaten breakfast before you come, before you arrive. Now, uh, here, you can also say they have, they have had breakfast. So here, they have eaten breakfast. Now, in this, this is a present perfect tense. Action of eating completed. It started in the past and it completes before another action, action of arriving now. Or we can say it just finished. We use what tense? Present perfect tense. For example, they have eaten breakfast when you, before you arrive. Or if I have another sentence, for example, uh, if I have a sentence uh, like sleeping and you started sleeping in the past and when I come or arrive, you finish it. For example, I can say you have slept you have slept before before i come or arrive again we have two more actions action of sleeping started in the past and it completes before action of what arriving so if an action is started in the past and completes before another action in the present tense we use this one so this is the only tense that connects past with the present tense this is the only tense let me say again this is the only tense that connects past with the present tense for example like this eat is started in the past doesn't matter the time is not specific it's, the time is unspecified it doesn't matter how long ago uh, or sleeping or reading or writing or playing and then the other action it finishes before another action in the present tense we use this tense. now here uh, we use some uh, adverbs for example, in this part, we use some adverbs in present perfect tense. For example, we use already. For example, we use yet. We use still. We use just. We use uh, ever. We use never. 
there are there are some adverbs that we use in in the present perfect tense. So the first one here, sometimes with just we also use uh, we also use just, or sometimes we can say lately or recently for the action that happened recently. We can use this structure. Now the first one already, we use already mostly with a positive sentence, and yet is mostly used with a negative and the questioned. So it still is mostly used with a negative sentence here. Just can be used with a question positive, but here mostly with a positive sentence. Okay, with a question is not common. So either it can be used with a positive sentence, it can be used with a question, and never is used with a positive sentence because never itself is negative. Now, the first one already. Now, where do we use already? If I have a sentence, look, you have slept before I arrive. Now, or they have eaten breakfast before you arrive. In this sentences, where can I where can I put already? So here already has two positions. The first position it can come after auxiliary verb before main verb, and it can also come after the main verb. For example, here between between half between half and slept. Here we can use already. We can use already between them. For example, if I write the sentence, I can say they have look they have already they have already eaten breakfast they have already eaten breakfast now this already comes be between the auxiliary verb and the main verb we don't ha we don't have to say they already have eaten breakfast <coughs> if i say they already have eaten breakfast that's wrong now what should i say here they have already eaten breakfast but i can also use i can also use like this they have eaten they had they have eaten breakfast already it can also come at the end of the sentence so we you can say that already can come it has two positions it can come after auxiliary verb before main verb and it can also come at the end after the main verb if there is no object it comes after the main verb but if there is an object it comes after the object so here we don't have to say they have eaten already breakfast what should we say they have already eaten breakfast so already has two positions it can come after the present perfect tense and it can also come after the auxiliary verb before main verb and it's mostly used with a positive sentence for example let's let's use for this one you have slept now here we have here th this one we have object but here we don't have object so what should I say now? You have slept before I arrive. How should I say? You can say you have already you have already slept. And you can complete the rest of them. You have already slept before I arrive. But I can also write you have you have slept already. You have slept already when I arrive. Now, in this sentence here, you have slept already. This already already comes comes look after the auxiliary verb before the main verb and here it comes actually after the main verb if there is no uh, any object so let's say it again already is used with a positive sentence and here it has two positions it can come after auxiliary verb before the main verb it can also come after the main verb if there is not any object if there is an object it comes after the object so we are done with the first one with already let's go and talk about the second one yet now if I have the same sentences, look, if I have the same sentences, for example, this, the same sentences, if I want to change the sentences to negative, for example, you have still eaten breakfast before I, you arrive, or I, they have eaten breakfast. If I want to change it to negative, I have to change it. For example, I can say they have, mm, they have faint eaten breakfast. They have faint eaten breakfast. Now, you can complete the rest of them. They haven't eaten breakfast before you arrive. So we don't write it because we don't have enough space. Now, they haven't eaten breakfast. Now, in this sentence here, can I use already? Can I say they have ain't eaten breakfast? Of course not. I said we use already with a positive sentence in present perfect. But for the negative and question form, what do we use? For the negative and question form, we use uh, yet. Now, yet has... It's, it mostly comes at the end of the sentence. It has two positions. So let me write it down if I want to use yet here. I have to say they have been eaten breakfast. I have to say they have faint eaten 
breakfast they haven't eaten breakfast yet here i have to use yet at the end so here in a negative sentence it comes at the end of the sentence but sometimes sometimes it can also be used at the beginning for example we can also say yet they have faint they have faint eaten breakfast sometimes 80 percent of the time it comes at the end around 80 percent of the times it comes at the end 80 percent it mostly it means mostly for 20 percent of the times it comes at the beginning uh, it's used for for actually for more emphasis if you want to emphasize your sentence we can say yeah they have been eaten breakfast so so for more emphasis it can also come at the beginning now if i want to change the same sentence to a question for example they have eaten breakfast and if i want to change it to question i have to say have they eaten breakfast have they eaten breakfast now where should i use ye? yet i said with a negative and question we use yet so here we have to use yet at the end of the sentence what do we say we say have they eaten breakfast yet so it comes at the end of the sentence we should be very careful not to use them at the beginning when we have a question now uh, this is how we can use already for i said it mostly comes for the negative sentence it comes at the end most of the time it comes at the end but sometimes for more emphasis we can also use at the beginning and you want to emphasize it for example uh, if i say they haven't eaten breakfast yet it doesn't emphasize but if i say yet they haven't eaten breakfast so i'm trying to emphasize my sentence now uh, this is how we can change how we can use yet in this sentence now if i have the second sentence for example you have slept before you have been slept before if i want to change this sentence to negative we use what you haven't slept before or you haven't slept yet or we can say yet you haven't slept have you slept yet now this is how we can use yet so we are also done with yet now for the still still is mostly common in negative sentence in present perfect and it it usually comes before auxiliary verb for example if i say i i still or we can say i haven't i haven't let's say for example i haven't bought a book i haven't bought a book now and if i want to use still here i have to use it before auxiliary verb so we can say i still look i still haven't bought a book or any book or the next one for he we can say he for example he hasn't he hasn't arrived here he hasn't arrived here now if i want to use it still so what should i use here i have to use it before that one what do we say here he still hasn't arrived here we don't have to say i have been still bought a book and we don't have to say he hasn't still arrived here so we have to use it um, after subject before the auxiliary verb now the next one we have just we use just or lately this is also done when you use lately and recently and just so here it's used for the action that that just finished for the recent actions for the recent actions we use lately just or recently where do we use them we use this uh, these adverbs after auxiliary verb before main verb for example if i have a sentence if i say she has she has for example now here she has just um, left the room if i want to talk about this person and if i want to use just here for the recent action we can say he has just or she has just left the room she was here before you come she just left so we can say she just left the room or we can say she has just left the room so so one of them is american the other one is british so she has just left the room or i can also say the same sentence i can say she has she has for example um she has set up for example set up a company if i have another sentence look we can say she has set up a company and if i want to use lately so what do we say here she has lately or she has recently started or set up a company in this sentence so 
lately and just comes after the auxiliary verb before the main verb. So we have to be careful about the positions we are, we should use them. Now, this is how we can use uh, lately, for the recent actions we use lately, and we also have ever. Let's focus on ever. When do we use ever? Now, if you use ever, mostly we use ever in two sentences. We can use ever with a positive sentence, and we can also use it with a question. If we use it with a positive sentence, it is mostly used for past experience. If you have experience, for the past experience, we use what? Ever with a positive sentence not uh, past experience with the question we use for the past experience let me write it down here for the when we use with the question we use the past experience but if we use it with a positive sentence we use it mostly with superlative adjective superlative form of the adjective so for superlative form of the adjective we use either with a positive sentence for example i can say this is the best car i have i have ever bought now in this sentence here we have this is the best car i have ever bought now this i have ever bought this is the present perfect and ever is used after auxiliary verb before main verb and here this is the best car is the splitty form of the adjective so we use it with the splitty form adjective when we use it in positive sentence or for example if i say she is the most beautiful look she is the most beautiful girl we we have or we've ever seen she's the most beautiful girl we have ever seen now in this sentence the most beautiful girl is the split form of the adjective now here she, we have ever seen so ever is used with a positive sentence now here we have ever seen now, this is the present perfect. So we use it with a positive sentence, especially with superlative form of the adjective. Now, we can also use it with a with a question. If we use we use either with a question form in present perfect, it talks about past experience. For example, if I have a sentence like this, if I say, "Have you ever have you ever been to the U.S.?" Or I can say, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever spoken Chinese? Have you ever spoken Chinese? Now, if I use it with a question, this is a question. And I have ever here, I have ever here, this is a question. Now, it, it talks about the past experience. For example, have you ever been to the US? You say yes or no. Have you ever taught English? Yes or no. Have you ever been to Bomion? Yes or no. Have you ever um, driven a car? Yes or no. Have you ever um, set up a company? Yes or no. Have you ever worked for that company? Yes or no. Now, if I use ever in present perfect with the question form, it talks about past experience. Now, this is very important. Now, the last one here, we use never. Never is mostly used with the past, uh, present perfect. When we have a positive sentence, it also talks about past experience. Now, if I want to answer these two questions, have you ever been to the US? Now, if I want to answer it, what do we say? We can say, I can say, I have, no, or you know, I have never been to the US. I have never been to the US. Now, here we have ever, sorry, never, never after auxiliary verb, before the main verb. We use never, and it shows the past experience. It means I don't have the experience. I have never been to the US. Or the next answer, have you ever spoken Chinese? Or we can say, no, I have never, I have never spoken, I have never spoken Chinese. Now. Here I use never, not never, with a positive sentence because itself is negative after auxiliary verb, before main verb, to talk about what? To talk about past experience. I don't have the experience. I have never um, taught mathematics. I have never repaired any car. Or, or I have never been on TV. I have never um, set up a company. So, no experience. When we use never with uh, present perfect 
especially with the positive sentence, it talks about past experience. So, now, th these are the adverbs that we use in the present perfect to talk about recent actions. Now, let's go and focus on the other, the other function of the present perfect. Now, the other function of present perfect, we also use present perfect. That, that is the first structure. That's the first structure. For the second structure, number two, I'll write it here. It talks about a situation, a situation started in the past, started in the past, past, and continues up to now, and continues up to now. It continues to the present. Now, here, this is the first one we discussed, the first usage, let me write the chart here. This is past, this is present, this is future. Another chart, here we have past, there we have present, and we have future. Now, if I, we discuss about it, if it talks about an action that started in the past and finishes before another action in the present, yes, recent action. Here, present perfect also talks about an action that started in the past, and here, continues up to now, it may continue to the future. It talks about a situation that started in the past and continues up to now, may continue to the future. So here we also use present perfect tense. Uh, for example, here if I say this one, look, I have known, it's an example, I have known her for two years. I have known her for two years. If I say I have known her for two years in this sentence, this is a present perfect. Now, I started knowing her two years ago. I know her now. I will also know in the future. Action is started in the past, continues up to now, it may continue to the future. So we can say I have known her for two years. Now here, action is started in the past and continues up to now, it may continue to the future. Now here, <clears throat> This is, I say this is a situation, it's mostly, it's mostly used for the duration of non-action verbs. Let me clarify it. Now, this usage, this usage, it talks about situations, mostly situations. Now, let's talk about, this one talks about the duration. Let's say here, the duration, the duration of what? The duration of non-action verbs. So, what are non-action verbs? Non-action verbs are the verbs <coughs> that they don't show usually actions. They, for example, they are no, for no, or we can say have, or we have love, we have uh, hate, we have um, understand, for, sometimes we, for live, we use this one for study for learned, for um, we also have work. Now for these, these actions actually can be used, uh, can be used with present perfect for duration, and it can also be, we can also use present perfect in terms. So, now this one mostly, this one I said mostly discuss about the duration of what? Non-action verbs. If I want to talk about the duration of non-action verbs, here I have to use this test. And mostly, we use two adverbs here. We use for and we use since. So, when do we use for? For is used to talk about the period. If I want to talk about the period, we have to use for. But if I want to talk about the starting point, starting point of an action, I have to use since. For is used for the duration. For example, we have for two months, we don't use since two months. Two years, three hours, four three hours, five months, four five months, six years, four six years. Last month, we use since starting point. For the years and for the months, we use since, for example, January, since January. 2010, since 2010. 2020, since 2020. Or um, three weeks, four three weeks. Uh, five hours, four, three, five, four, five hours. Now, so four talks about the period and sense talks about the starting point, exactly when we started. Now, so mostly it's used for the duration of non-action verbs. If I say no, 
And if I want to talk about the duration, I have to say how long have you known? Now I have to say, I have to use the present perfect tense. For example, I can say they have, they have known each other. They have known each other for, for, for example, let's say for two years, for two years. So two years ago, they met each other. They know each other now, and they will also know each other in the future. Now this is the duration, they have known each other for two years. Here, I can also use another sentence, for example, we have, we have, we have had our house since 2015. If I have a sentence like this, we have had our, ha uh, our house since 2015. So we bought our house in 2015, we still have it. We may have it in the future. We have it tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. It's may because sometimes we, we want to sell it and we buy another house. So that's why, so action of buying, having had, having the house started in 2015, we still have it. Or the next one, we can say, he has lived. Look, he has lived in Kabul, in Kabul. For how long he has lived in Kabul? For, they can say, for 10 years. So it means 10 years ago he came to Kabul and he is still living and will also live in the future. He has left in Kabul. Or I can say, for example, I can also say, I have, look, I have worked, I have worked here uh, since 2014. I have worked here since 2014. Now I started working here 2014. I still work here. I may work in the future. So here, here, action is stored in the past, it continues up to future. So it talks about the situation that is started in the past, it continues up to now, it may continue to the future. And mostly for the duration of non-action verbs, the duration of non-action verbs, we use present perfect tense. Now, but for these verbs, live, study, learn and work, sometimes we use the durations. Sometimes we use present perfect, sorry, sometimes we use present perfect continuous tense. I'll discuss about that. Now, we, have, we can give more examples, for example, he has studied English for two years, or for three years, or four years, or five years. Now, this is uh, how we use it for the duration of action verbs. We use it, we use the present perfect tense. And if I want to ask questions about the duration for these things, I have to use how long. For example, I can say, how long have you known, how long have you known her? Or I can also ask, for example, how long has, has she lived here? You can answer, how long have you, have you known her? I have known her for two years, for three years, for four years. And how long has she lived here? Since 2010, since 2009, since 2000, okay? Now, if I want to ask questions about the iteration, I have to use this, use it. Now, this is user number two. Sometimes we can also use present perfect tense. Sometimes we can also use present perfect tense to discuss about here. If I want to talk about, if I want to talk about number three, the repetition, the repetition of action, okay, the repetition of action from past up to now, in, let's say in the past, up to now. If I want to talk about uh, how many times an action repeated, from past up to now, we have to use present perfect tense. For example, this is the chart, this is past, this is present, and this is future. Now, this one talks about an action that started in the past, look. It continued for a period of time, for example, this many times, up to now. It may continue to the future. Now, for this one, what should we use here? we have to use present perfect tense. We mostly use for this one, we use so far, mostly so far, but we can say three times, four times, five times, 10 times. For example, if I say they have, look, they have had, they have had how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six. They have, we can say they have had, look, they have had six tests so far, so far this term. 
So it means six times from past up to now. Six times. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six times. They took the test, finished. Took the test, finished. So this action repeated how many times? Six times. Or if you, for example, if you've been to Bamiyan four times this year, and then we can say you have, you have been, look, you have been to Bamiyan. We have been to Bamiyan four times, four times, four times so far. Okay, let me write so far this year. So this year, from past up to now, for this year, beginning up to now, you went to Bamiyan four times, came back. Went to Bamiyan, came back. Went to Bamiyan, came back four times. So for the repetition of an action from past up to now, we have to use present perfect tense. Or the next one, she has, look, she has, uh, she has, she has had three quizzes. She has had three quizzes so far. So far this semester. So this action of having quizzes happened three times this semester. Uh, for the duration of action from past up to now, for the repetition of an action in the past, from past up to now, we use also, we also use present perfect tense. Now, this is all about the usages of the present perfect tense. Now, let's, let's actually, let's discuss about some of the contractions that we have in the present continuous tense. Now, for example, if I have I, we, you, they, and he, she, and it. Now, so for this one, for the first one, we use have. We use have, I have, we have, we you say you have, they have, for he we can say has, for she we can say has, for it we can say has. Now, if I want to use the contraction form, so how should I use the contraction form of I have? I have becomes apostrophe V E. I've, how do you pronounce it? I've. This one, how do we, we pronounce it? We can pronounce it we've. This one, we can pronounce it you've. This one, we pronounce it they've. This one, actually, we can use apostrophe S. He's. We have to be careful not to, not to confuse this one with he is. It's a contraction form of his is also he is. So for she, we can say she's. For it, we can say it's. So it's very careful. We have to be careful not to make such mistakes. But sometimes we have the negative form. If I say I have not, how should I change? How should I use the negative form of I have not? The contraction form, sorry. So we can say I have not. Or we can also say I haven't. Both of them are right. I have not or I haven't. If I have, for example, for he has not, so the contraction form could be two contraction contracted forms. We can say, uh, for example, he, we can contract this to, he's not, or we can contract this to, we can say he, sorry, he isn't. Sorry, he hasn't, not isn't, he hasn't. So he's not, or we can say he hasn't. Now, this is how we can change and how we can use the question forms of the present perfect tense. Now, present perfect tense actually talks about an action that is started in the past and completes before another action in the present tense. And we use those adverbs already, just, yet, and still. And it also talks about an action or a situation that is started in the past so we have to use present perfect tense for the duration of non-action verbs. Mostly no, mostly have, mostly love, mostly hate. You know, we can say he has loved her for many years. She has hated him for two years. Now, uh, it also talks about the repetition of an action in the past. Mostly used so far. How many times an action repeated in the past? We use the present perfect tense. Now, this is all about the present perfect tense. And uh, thank you very much.